In a mysterious underground laboratory, Gary and Steve are discussing their home lives when they're suddenly interrupted by Wendy, who informs them Stockholm has failed, meaning it's only them and Japan left. However the men don't look worried because Japan has always been number one and this American lab has always been a close second, so they should be able to finish the job without issues. Meanwhile five college students are getting ready for their vacation. There's Dana, who is trying to forget her affair with a teacher, Kurt and his girlfriend Jules, Holden, and Marty, who is already smoking by the time he joins the group. They load a VR with all their things, including Kurt's bike, and leave to spend a few days in a cabin in the woods. On the roof of their home, a suspicious man lets his bosses know the group is on its way. Once they're far enough on the road, Jules notices they don't have signal, and Marty explains that's the entire point, to get off the grid and relax. At the same time, Gary and Steve begin getting the computers ready in the lab's control room. They also meet Daniel, the new room security officer, who thinks he's ready for anything that may happen. Sometime later, the group stops at a gas station, although it looks abandoned and they can't tell if the pumps work at all. Holden enters the building to investigate and finds a collection of very creepy things, only to suddenly be startled by Mordecai. The man knows about the cabin they're talking about, explaining he's seen lots of owners come and go. He gives them directions on how to reach the place, pointing out that the gas they have is enough to get them there, but getting back it's their concern. He also insults Jules, and Kurt wants to punch him for it, but Holden quickly holds him back and the group decides to leave before things get ugly. After a few more miles of driving, the group takes a tunnel under a mountain, which is the only way to reach these woods since there's a wide ravine surrounding it. As the VR passes by, a bird flies too close but gets hit by an invisible wall, revealing this area is surrounded by a force field. Minutes later, the group makes it to the cabin and begins unpacking their things. Holden finds an extremely creepy painting in his room and puts it down, only to discover there's a one-way mirror into Dana's room. When Holden realizes he can see Dana changing, he immediately yells at her to stop and calls everyone to show them the mirror. After a few jokes are cracked, Holden offers Dana to change rooms, which Dana is very grateful for. Then she notices she can see Holden changing as well, so she puts the painting back in its place. She finds it rather creepy too and decides to cover it with a blanket. Back to the lab, it turns out they're recording what's going on inside the cabin. They discuss an incoming scenario adjustment and somehow get access to the students' blood tests, which indicate the chemicals they've planted in Jules' hair dye are working great and have increased her libido. Their conversation is suddenly interrupted by a call from Mordecai, who lets them know the students are on their way and begins preaching about their cleansing for the greater good. He takes this so seriously that Gary and Steve can only laugh. While the friend group spends their day at the lake, Gary and Steve begin taking bets on what the students will be choosing at the cabin. Daniel thinks this is all rather harsh, but Wendy points out they need to lose some steam to make this very difficult job easier. When Daniel wonders if the higher-ups know about this, Steve explains their bosses don't care as long as the job is finished. Daniel also thinks it's unfair to bet on an outcome that is controlled by them, but Steve and Gary say the system isn't like that, the students will be guided to the seller, but the final choice is theirs to make. They chose to ignore Mordecai's warning, and only if they choose again they can be punished. When night falls, the friend group plays truth or dare. Jules is dared to kiss a wolf head that hangs on the wall, and she does while behaving like a tart, which is unusual for her. Then Dana chooses dare, and at that moment, a door on the floor opens behind them, courtesy of the lab people. The students blame it on the wind and decide Dana's dare is to go into that cellar. When she does so, she discovers it's full of creepy objects, like an old piano and ugly dolls. Suddenly the picture of a girl startles Dana and she screams, causing the others to come down as well. Marty turns on a lamp and they discover even more creepy stuff, which makes Marty think they shouldn't stay down here, especially when he hears a voice whispering to him. The others ignore him and start poking around at things like a music box with a ballerina and a strange ball, but their search is interrupted by Dana, who has found a diary. She reads passages explaining that the first family that owned this house was tortured by the father, and the daughter found a book with some prayers that would bring the Holy Spirits to them. There are a few lines in Latin on the page, and Marty asks Dana not to read them, but Dana does it anyway. This causes the corpses of the family to come back from death, and people at the lab celebrate that the employees from maintenance won the bet. It turns out their bet was based on what monster would attack the students depending on what item they played with. Daniel still can't believe gods and magic are real, and Steve is disappointed they won't get to see a merman since it never gets chosen. Then he and Gary check on the screens that show the same job is being done all over the world, every other country has failed except Japan. In a Japanese school, young girls are dealing with a creepy ghost. Afterward, the friend group goes upstairs and Kurt and Jules continue to behave strangely. Kurt keeps on drinking and making jerk comments, while Jules dances in a provocative way and jokingly flirts with Marty. Since the other three aren't in the mood anymore, Kurt and Jules leave to have privacy in the forest. Marty asks Dana if she doesn't notice that their friends are acting weird, and he confesses he's feeling like there are some puppeteers behind all this. Dana tells him it's just the side effects of what he's smoking, so Marty decides to go to his bedroom and rest. Now they're alone, Dana joins Holden on the couch and they end up kissing. 
Meanwhile Kurt is trying to convince Jules to get frisky in the forest, but Jules doesn't want to undress because it's chilly. People at the lab are disappointed because they want to see some action, so they release pheromones to change Jules' mind. As the couple begins getting in the mood, the technicians also turn on a special light to create a romantic spot on the grass. Kurt and Jules lie down and start getting busy, causing Jules to show her chest to the cameras. Daniel wonders if this is going too far, but Steve explains they have to keep the customer satisfied. Suddenly, a zombie shows up and stabs Jules' hand. She runs back and Kurt jumps in to defend her, but the zombie stabs him in the shoulder. Kurt pushes him away and removes the blade from his shoulder, only to see a second zombie arrive. This one uses a chain to knock Kurt down and then capture Jules. The first zombie grabs Kurt to make him watch how the whole zombie family kills Jules with a rusty saw. At the lab, Steve and Gary say a prayer, indicating Jules' death as an offering, and Steve pulls down a lever to make Jules' blood fall into a mysterious contraption. At the cabin, Marty hears the voice again and decides to go for a walk. First he stops to relieve himself, and notices there are no stars in the sky. One of the zombies suddenly appears and slowly begins to approach him, but at that moment Kurt shows up, pushes the zombie away and brings Marty into the house. Kurt then tells everyone that Jules is dead and that they need to leave. Against Marty's warnings, Dana opens the door and finds another zombie, who throws Jules' head at her. Dana screams as Kurt and Holden rush to lock the door, keeping the zombie outside. Kurt points out it's important to stick together for safety and that they need to barricade every window and door. This may make the job hard for the lab, so the technicians release a disorienting gas that makes Kurt change his mind, and he announces they should split instead to cover more ground. Each student runs to their respective room, and the technicians lock their doors. Marty rushes to close the window and accidentally knocks off a lamp, which breaks and reveals a hidden camera. Steve contacts the chem lab to get something that will make him forget, but Gary stops him because there's already a zombie on the way. As Marty wonders if this is a reality show, he rests his body against the window, and the zombie breaks the glass to grab him and throw him outside. The two of them exchange a few hits, but the zombie stabs Marty and drags him into the forest. Then the technicians pull the lever again, and it's shown that Marty's blood is sent to a stone carving. The ground under the cabin begins to shake, and a zombie breaks through Dana's window. She begins crying for help, and Holden breaks the mirror between their rooms to bring her over to his. There's another zombie trying to break in there as well, and when Holden moves the bed to block the attack, Dana discovers another cellar door. She uses a lamp to check it's safe, and when Kurt comes by to join them, Holden tells him he can't unlock the door so Kurt should hide in the basement. Holden and Dana enter the new cellar and discover a series of terrifying tools that make Dana realizes this is the room where the father killed the family. Suddenly the cellar door opens and a zombie appears using the chain to capture Holden. Dana immediately grabs him too and brings him back into the cellar before grabbing any tool she can find around to stab the zombie until it can't move anymore. Gary activates a switch that causes the blade in Dana's hand to electrocute her, causing her to drop it so she can't defend herself anymore. Suddenly another door opens and Kurt shows up from an adjoining basement room, telling Holden and Dana he's found a way out. They follow a dark corridor until they reach a door that takes them outside. The trio escapes in the VR without noticing the bloody handprint on the door. Meanwhile the Japanese schoolgirls manage to exorcise the ghost, meaning the American team is the only one standing. Wendy calls Steve and Gary to tell them off for having been so smug about the whole thing and reminds them to take this seriously because they can't let the ancients rise. At that moment Gary notices the VR is about to reach the tunnel, which shouldn't be open. Gary rushes to check what's keeping the demolition team from causing the cave-in and discovers there was a glitch in the system. As the VR enters the tunnel, Gary patches the wires and finally makes the tunnel collapse. Kurt reacts quickly and drives backward to escape before they're crushed. The only way out would be jumping across the ravine, but they don't have any ropes. Kurt decides to try to jump over with his bike since he's done some big jumps before. Unfortunately when Kurt jumps, he hits the invisible wall and is electrocuted before falling into the abyss. Dana realizes that Marty was right about someone controlling things behind the scenes, and the technicians use Kurt's blood to fill another stone carving. Holden and Dana get in the VR and drive back to the cabin because Holden thinks they could find a road behind it. His words are suddenly interrupted by a blade coming at him from behind, instantly killing him. Dana screams when she sees there's a zombie in the VR, which is now going off the road and falling into the lake. The zombie tries to grab Dana, but she just swims away while the technicians at the lab celebrate with a drink. Daniel doesn't understand why they're happy considering Dana is alive, but Steve explains the sacrifice of the untouched is optional as long as it's done last and she gets to suffer first. While Dana reaches the pier and is attacked by a zombie, the lab employees throw a party. The demolition team stays defensive and says the glitch was caused by a power reroute from upstairs, which Gary thinks doesn't make sense. Then the phone connected to the people upstairs begins ringing, and Steve picks up the call to learn that one of the sacrifices is still alive, so the ritual hasn't been completed. The zombie on the pier is about to kill Dana when suddenly Marty shows up to help her. The two of them hit the zombie to make it fall into the lake, then they run away, aware that the zombies are still following them. 
Marty makes Dana enter one of the graves, where the zombie that took Marty is on the floor in pieces after Marty took care of it with a trowel. The place doesn't look like a grave, it's more like a metal box with an electrical panel. Marty activates it and opens a door on the floor that takes them into a box-like elevator. The duo enters it and the elevator begins moving around in all kinds of directions. When it stops for a few seconds, a werewolf crashes against the wall, trying to get at them. Then the elevator moves again, and each time it stops, Marty and Dana meet a new monster. Dana begins matching the monsters with the objects they had seen in the cellar and realizes the puppeteers made choose what would kill them. There are hundreds of monsters down here waiting for their turn to be released for the show. While Dana has a breakdown, the technicians panic as they discuss how to proceed. Wendy discovers that the team missed one of Marty's stashes, so he's been smoking without the technicians chemicals and became immune to the stuff. When the elevator finally stops, the doors open to reveal a guard that wants to take Dana. However the zombie arm on the floor moves and grabs the guy, giving Marty and Dana the chance to push him against the wall and knock him out. Then they take the zombie's knife and the guard's gun before going down a corridor, where a female voice begins explaining their part of something bigger in their job is to placate the ancient ones. At that moment more guards show up, so Dana and Marty run to hide inside a small control room. Dana notices the panel and presses the button, causing all the monsters to escape their cages. Now chaos takes over the building as the monsters kill anyone they find in their path, from guards to scientists. The power goes out in the main control room and something tries to break down the door while Marty and Dana are suddenly startled by a dragon bat. They run away, dodging or shooting at the monsters that try to catch them, and enter a hole in the wall that takes them into a hidden tunnel. In the control room, Gary and Wendy are trying to get the door to their emergency tunnel open. Daniel is killed by the scarecrows, but before dying he activates a grenade that knocks Steve down. On the floor he's disappointed to see that the merman is actually incredibly ugly before the monster kills him. As giant tentacles break through the ceiling and grab Wendy, Gary finally manages to open the emergency door and he runs down the hidden tunnel, where he accidentally bumps against Dana and her knife. Before dying, Gary asks Dana to kill Marty. Afterward Marty gives Dana the gun and the duo goes down the tunnel to find a chamber with five huge stone carvings, of which four are filled with blood. Dana realizes each carving represents a member of the friend group and this is all a sacrifice ritual. Marty wonders why they just don't kill them fast and directly, and Dana points out they probably want to see them punished. Suddenly the female voice from before confirms they were punished for being young and the director shows up, explaining that this ritual was created to appease the ancient ones. They're giant evil gods that sleep under the lab and they'll awaken to destroy Earth if the ritual isn't completed. There are only 8 minutes before the sun comes up, so Marty must die for others to survive. Marty doesn't want the world to live at the expense of his friend's deaths, but Dana understands the greater good and points the gun at Marty as she apologizes. At that moment a werewolf appears behind Dana, and instead of warning her, Marty apologizes too. The werewolf attacks Dana, causing her to drop the gun. The director and Marty try to grab it at the same time and Marty wins by pushing the director away. Then he shoots at the werewolf, causing it to run away. The director comes after Marty and starts a fight while a zombie with an axe appears in the room. Dana sees it and warns Marty, so when the zombie raises the axe, Marty uses the director as a shield and she gets killed instead. Marty kicks them both off the edge of the platform, and since the director and the zombie aren't part of the ritual, the ground shakes for a few seconds, announcing the incoming awakening of the Ancient Ones. While waiting for the end, Marty and Dana apologize to each other while sharing one last smoke. Suddenly a giant arm bursts through the ground, destroying the lab and the cabin, and the rest of Earth is next.